Today's message is called the believer's authority. And I truly believe this is a much needed message in this time. But not only for this time and season, I believe this will establish faith so that you begin to walk in the authority that is delegated to you and that you begin to take dominion over every area of your life as God has ordained. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power. Everyone say power. Come on, say it louder, church. Power. Over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now turn with me also to Luke chapter 10. And then after that, we'll go to Mark chapter 1. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. Everyone say 70. And sent them about two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Look at verse 9. And heal the sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Look at verse 17 now. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. In your name. Everyone say, in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Everyone say authority. Everyone say nothing. Nothing shall hurt you. Now turn to Mark chapter 1 verse 22. Then they went into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority. Can you say authority again? And not as the scribes. Now there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit and he cried out saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Now, Jesus' ministry had a display of power and authority that we see in the casting out of demons, in the rebuking of storms, and even in the rebuking of sickness and diseases. Not only that, when he spoke, he spoke with authority so that even the people testified that he has authority that we have not seen in any other teacher. This same authority Jesus delegates in Matthew chapter 10 to his 12 disciples. And then in Luke chapter 10 to the 70 other disciples. So that they go and witness the same authority manifesting through their lives against sickness and disease and the power of the enemy. So we have to understand that the concept of authority here is important. Important to the success of a Christian life. When we understand authority and how it operates, it will help us in a relationship with God, in a relationship with one another, and also in the way we interact with the spirit realm. Because there is a realm that we do not see and yet is absolutely real and tangible, even more than the physical realm, and that is the spiritual realm. And therefore, we need to have knowledge of authority. Hallelujah. The word authority used in these scriptures is the Greek word exousia. Everyone say exousia. And the word authority means this, delegated authority. Everyone say delegated authority. Governmental power, the power of rule and privilege, it also means legal authority. So this authority is positional and it is delegated. 
For example, if you work for the government as an officer, because of your position, you have authority, and that authority has been delegated to you. So this is different from other words of power you see in the scriptures. In the English, we only say power, but in the Greek, there are many words. There's a word for power called kratos, which means power that comes from your strength, physical power, power from within. There's another word called dunamis, which is the power of the Holy Spirit, supernatural power. But the word power here is the word exousia. Everyone say exousia. And it means delegated authority. Now let's understand simple basic things here because I want to build from a foundation and go to a point where we understand how to apply this in our life. All authority comes from God. All authority comes from God because He's the one who has all dominion. Amen. Hallelujah. Number two, you better be writing it down. Delegated authority is biblical. God instituted institutions such as the government, such as the family, such as the church, and also the marriage. So in these institutions, there is delegation of authority. The husband is the head of the wife. The father is the head of the family. In the government, whoever is in charge and the top, they have authority over the government. In the church, the elders along with the pastors are the ones who have authority. So delegated authority is biblical, but it is also limited to its boundaries. Authority should not cross boundaries. For example, in Nagaland, we allow government officials to have undue authority in church, in matters of doctrine, in matters of conduct. It is wrong. We should not allow the boundaries to be corroded simply because we are intimated with the power that the person possesses in the government or with the wealth they have in society. There are limits and boundaries to authority and those who have authority in those areas must rise up and function with firmness. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no autonomous authority. All authority comes from God. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 7, Submit to God, resist the devil. So first, submit to God, resist the devil. Your authority to resist the devil comes when you submit to God. So all of us must be under authority. The authority of God, the authority of scriptures, the authority of one another, the authority of leaders. There is no autonomous leadership or authority. And the third, last thing is this. All authority is for the purpose of serving others. It is not to serve yourself. All authority is for the purpose of the benefit of the kingdom of God. Now turn with me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. It's important to understand the concept from the beginning and to see that God had given delegated authority to men from the very beginning. Now verse 26 says, God made man in his image. In his own likeness. Look at verse 28. Then God blessed them. God blessed the first two human beings, Adam and Eve. And through that, God has blessed all men. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Everyone says subdue. Underline it. The word subdue means put it under your feet. Trample upon. It implies there is a work to it. It doesn't just happen automatically. Trample, put it upon, put it under your feet. And then let them have, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Look at the word dominion. Everyone say dominion. It means to rule. It means to subjugate. It means to put under you. And we see one of the first things that Adam does is he names the animals. He names all the animals and the birds. You see, the ability to name, it means that you have authority over it. That's why you name your pets. Your pets don't name you. You name your pets. You see, the one who has authority to name, put his name over certain places, they are the ones who have authority. 
Hallelujah. And that's why your name is very important. Your name came from your father. And that's the name you take. Sometimes when you go to school, people tease you. People give you a different name. Don't accept that. Don't accept labels. When people are being racist and they call you chinky. I don't know whether they've called you or not. They call you China man when you're studying outside. Or we ourselves call people other names. You see, it is an oppression. Racism is an oppression. Calling other people labels is an oppression that is not godly. It is trying to exercise authority and lordship over people in an inappropriate way. And if you receive that, it actually brings in an oppression and a heaviness upon you. Don't accept any labels. Don't accept anyone who teases you with names. That's not who you are. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. You are not ugly. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, you are not ugly. Hallelujah. So you see in the beginning, man was given authority. That means the right and the, the privilege to rule and to reign over the earth. Hallelujah. God had given authority to men to rule and to reign. That means it was not God who would reign on the earth. It was man that was given the authority to rule and to reign on the earth. Now everything is going to be from the Bible. And let it destroy any myths you may have in your mind, any unbelief about the exercise of your authority. Hallelujah. Now, Adam sinned in Genesis chapter 3. And because men sinned, men surrendered the authority to rule over the earth to Satan. Turn to Luke chapter 4 verse 6. And when Jesus comes, he himself says that Satan is the ruler of this earth. So because of sin, the authority to rule was surrendered to Satan. And Satan now has become the ruler of the earth in the wrong way, through deceit. But nonetheless, he became the ruler of the earth. Look at verse 6. The devil said to Jesus, all this authority, the word there is exousia. Now, he says, all this authority, I will give you and the glory, for this has been delivered to me. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, God gave authority to Satan. In the Bible it says, God gave authority to Adam and Eve in the beginning. Now, Satan here says, it has been delivered to me. That means he took it by deceit. He took it by force from Adam and Eve. And he literally had authority to give to Jesus. And he says, if you will bow down and worship me, I will give it to you. So if Jesus would bow down to Satan, he is bringing himself under the authority of the wicked one. Now Jesus did not do that. But you must understand, the same temptation Satan keeps on bringing to people even today. Because the devil has not changed. It's the same tactic, it's the same temptation. He is still on the earth and he goes to pop stars, he goes to rap stars and he tells them, if you will bow down to me and worship me and if you make me your master, I will give you riches, I will give you power, I will give you fame, I will give you women. Don't have this imagination that this thing happened only here in the Gospels. It is happening today all over the world. People are giving their lives over to Lucifer in order to get money, fame, and wealth. It is happening. Amen. We have to be aware of the works of darkness. So Satan took the authority. But Jesus came to take it back from Satan. So when Jesus died on the cross and Jesus resurrected from the dead, he paid the price of his blood. Everyone say the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. He paid the price of his blood and he took back the authority from Satan. And he took it back not for himself because he was already the king of kings and the lord of lords. He was already in heaven, having all authority, he did not have to take it for himself. He took it for us. He took it for all men. Can you say amen? 
And because he was perfectly obedient to the Father as a man, the Father gave him Philippians chapter 2. You can look at there in verse 9. God gave him the name that is above all names. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Can you say hallelujah? Amen. So the name of Jesus, all authority has been put into that. What does it mean? It means he took it from the enemy. Satan no longer has any authority. Hallelujah. Jesus, by legal rights, in the courts of heaven, by the payment of the price of sin, legally takes back the authority from Satan. So that today, turn to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. Today, those who believe in Jesus... Can I see your hands if you believe in Jesus? Those who believe in Jesus, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, He has delivered us out of the power of darkness. The word power there is the Greek word exousia. He has delivered us. Jesus has delivered us from the authority of darkness, from the rule of darkness, from the dominion of darkness, and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Can you say hallelujah? Amen. You have to get excited about scriptures like this. This is not a classroom where I'm teaching you economics and geography and physics. I'm teaching you the word for your life. This is the key to your victory. If you understand this, you don't have to call me at 2 a.m. in the morning. But you come here and you listen to the word of God and you keep on calling me to pray and cast the demon out of your life. You are not growing in the word. This is the key. Get excited about the word of God. That is the way to receive. Whatever you expect, you will experience. If you are listening to the word of God and you are not expecting any faith, you are not expecting God to speak to you, I don't know why you came to church. Expect. Expectation leads to experience. Amen. Hallelujah. He has delivered us. Come on, turn to your neighbor and tell him, you have been delivered from the power of darkness. Hallelujah. That means fear has no authority over you. Depression has no authority over you. Suicidal thoughts has no authority over you. Don't give in. You are now in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. It's a kingdom of light and authority. All darkness is under your feet. Hallelujah. So now this is what he has done for us. Not only that, Matthew chapter 28, look at verse 18 to 19 and 20. Jesus tells his disciples and says, All authority has been given to me. Everyone say all. All means all. All authority in heaven, on earth, and under the earth has been given to Jesus. It is now in him. It is now invested in him. It is now Hallelujah. Domiciled in Him. Hallelujah. All authority is in Jesus. And then He says in verse 19, Go therefore. Go. That is the delegation. He is delegating the church. He is delegating you and I. To go therefore, preach the gospel, dominate the powers of darkness, disciple the nations, and bring them to the knowledge of Jesus. He delegates the same authority as he did to the 12 and as he did to the 70. He does it now to us, the church, so that we today have the same authority. The same authority that Peter had, that Paul had, disciples had in the book of Acts. That same authority that is upon Jesus is now given to us. But unless you understand it, you will never exercise it. If you will never exercise it, you will never experience it. What is the scope of this authority? The scope of this authority is in relation to the kingdom of God. Not your selfish desires. Alright? The scope of this authority is this. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you power to trample on serpents and scorpions. Referring to the evil spirits. 
Not literal serpents and scorpions, all right? But it would, it would also include that by your faith. Serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy. Everyone say all the power. God has given you authority over all powers of darkness. The weakest Christian has authority over all the powers of darkness. Come on, you got to get excited. You are not excited? I don't know what happened to you guys. You have authority over all the powers of darkness. Amen. All the powers of darkness. You have authority over every evil spirit. You have authority over Satan. You have authority over any demon that may manifest in your life. Hallelujah. You have authority over depression, fear, anxiety. You have authority over suicidal thoughts. You have authority over any power of witchcraft. There is nothing to fear as a believer if you understand this. You have authority over every spiritual attack. Amen. You have authority. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, you have authority. You have authority over sickness and disease. You have authority over all the works of the enemy. And nothing. Jesus said, nothing. Nothing means nothing shall by any means hurt you. But do you believe that? Because if you don't, you will allow the enemy to hurt you. You have power over all the works of darkness. All the power of the enemy. Look at Matthew chapter 16, 18 to 19. Jesus tells his disciples, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. The gates of Hades represents the powers of darkness. And Jesus is saying that the gates of Hades, the powers of darkness, cannot prevail against my church. Who is my church? Is this building or you? It's you. You are the church of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. The powers of darkness, the powers of hell cannot prevail against you. The word prevail means be victorious. Overcome. Cannot overcome you. Why are you letting fear overcome you? Why are you letting depression overcome you? God has given you authority to dominate fear. But you have to exercise your authority. Hallelujah. Amen. And then it says in verse 19, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Keys. Keys denote authority. Everyone say authority. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose will be loosed in heaven. God has given us authority to bind and to loose in the realm of the spirit. You can bind evil spirits. You can command them to stop working and you can loose blessings. You can loose Captives free from the oppression of darkness. And this is not given as a gift to a few select people who stay in prayer homes or who work in full-time ministry. Don't get me wrong. This is gift for everyone. Every believer. It is not a few select people. Every believer. Now the problem is because we are ignorant of this, we are not exercising it. And every time we have a problem, we think we have to go to the most anointed person. Instead of understanding that you yourself are anointed. You yourself have been delegated this authority. Now the exercise of the scope of the authority also depends on the fear of influence that you have. For example, a father has authority over the family. As a teacher, you have authority over your classroom to pray blessings over them. As a government official, you have authority in your realm to bring change. As a pastor, I have authority over you that when I pray over you, God will release blessings. Hallelujah. Now turn with me to Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Now understand this thing. The authority God gives us is not over human beings. If you see a girl that you like, don't go home and say to the Lord, I claim her to be my wife. Your authority is not over other people's will. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Then Peter said to the man at the gate of beautiful, lame from birth, silver and gold I do not have. What I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What is that? That is the use of authority. Peter did not pray, Jesus, please make him rise up and walk. He used the authority that was given to him and he said, I command you, rise up and walk. And that man leaped up and he walked into the temple, leaping and walking and dancing. Now turn to Acts chapter 16, verse 18. Acts chapter 16, verse 18. Now there was a woman a certain slave girl possessed with an evil spirit of divination, verse 16. And she followed Paul and his team, crying out, These men are the servants of the Most High God and disturbing their ministry, verse 18. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you. Look at his words. He says, I command you. It was not an angel of God. It was not Jesus who came and did it. It was Paul. He says, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. The pronoun he there is referring to the spirit of divination. Evil spirits are also personal beings. And look at what Paul does. Paul addresses the spirit, not the slave girl. He addresses the spirit and says, I command you, come out of her. So here we see how to function in the authority that God gives to us. Now, James chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Christians have turned this verse around. We submit to the devil. We resist God and we flee from the devil. <laughs> the Bible says, submit to God. Come under the authority of God. Obey Him. Walk in His will. Do the word of God. Can you say amen? Submit to God and then you will be able to resist the devil and he will flee. The devil's job is to flee. Come on, make him do his job. His job is to flee from you. The work of the evil spirit is to flee from you, not to harass you. Some of you have come here, you are being harassed by evil spirits. You have to resist and you have to make them flee by the authority God has given to you. Hallelujah. Submit to God. Here the implication is this. You submit to God and you resist the devil and he will flee from you. God will not resist the devil for you. God will not make the devil flee for you. Because Jesus has already done what he needs to do on the cross. He has already paid the price. He has already redeemed us by his blood. He has already resurrected from the dead. And he has all power and authority given to him. And he has given us that authority. And now he says, you use my authority. Let me tell you this again. Understand this. Jesus is not going to cast out any evil spirits from your life. He has already done his work. Now it is your job to exercise the authority. God is not going to resist the devil for you. Have you ever noticed that? Sometimes the evil spirits come and disturb you and God did not do anything. He allowed it to happen. It's not that God desires that, but God wants us to use our authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when you use your faith, I'm under the blood of Jesus Christ. I live under the shadow of His wings. Yes, there's protection. But there are times that we open ourselves up to certain situations where we can be harassed, where we can be affected. In those moments, we sometimes cry, we plead before the Lord, and say, Lord, please make this thing go away. 
But unless you use authority, it will not go away. Hallelujah. Amen. So we must understand where our authority comes from. It comes from God. There was a friend of mine that I had gone and visited many, many years back. And he was working for the chief minister. And I was asking, how is your new work going on? And he says, you know, I had to learn the hard way how to function in my authority. Because the chief minister gave me certain files. I went to certain departments and met officers. And I asked them to do what the chief minister said. But those people were against him. And so they wanted to resist the files. And so they were very resistant. I went back to the chief minister and I said, these people, they're not being open. They're not letting the files go through. And the chief minister looked at him and says, I have given you authority. If you cannot use it, I will find another person. He's not going to go and make those files move by himself. He gives the authority to this person and says, make sure these files move. Then he understood that he cannot just keep on hiding behind the uniform or behind the position of the chief minister. I have to use his authority. So he said to me, I went back with boldness and I told the officers, you have to do this. Whether you like it or not. Because I represent the authority of the CN. And then they began to relent. Now whether this happened in a moral situation or not, don't judge me when it's okay. I'm just talking about the source of our authority. Hallelujah. So when you understand where your authority comes from, when you understand the source of your authority, you will have boldness to exercise. Why are people afraid to exercise the authority? Is because they think it comes from them. I have not prayed enough. I am not strong enough. I am not good. I am not holy. And therefore, I don't have authority. Let me ask the pastor to pray because he's a prayerful man. Let me find those people who are so-called prophets because they are good. And so, we have fear in exercising our authority. Let me get you to understand this. There is no authority that comes from me or any prophet on the earth. All authority comes from Jesus. Can you say amen? All our authority is derived from Christ and the finished work. And when you understand this, you will be released to exercise your authority from this day forth. Number one, the grounds of our authority. Write this down. What are the grounds of our authority? I hope you have enough time to finish this today. The grounds of authority is number one, the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood. Because you are standing on the blood of Christ. You have authority. Your authority comes from the blood. It doesn't come from you. How long you prayed. How good you are. No. It comes from the blood. Can you say amen? Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. The Bible says, We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb. See, because we are forgiven by the blood. We are covered by the blood. We are redeemed by the blood. Hallelujah. We have authority. The devil is afraid of the blood. See, our faith must be this. I am covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Our faith must be this. When the angel of death came to Egypt to smite the firstborn, every house where there was blood, the angel could not enter. So if you are covered with the blood of Jesus, no virus, no disease can enter your body. It must first go through the blood of Jesus. Can you say hallelujah? Amen. There is no protection in fear. There is no protection in panicking. Your protection is in the unseen realm where your faith connects to the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 2006, I remember one time I went through a sudden attack. There was confusion, depression, and fear that came all at once. And it always felt like I was so overwhelmed in my thoughts and I was losing my mind. So I went quickly to my room. It was during a time when I was going through depression. And I began to pray. And I began to pray this. I plead the blood of Jesus on my life. I began to pray this. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Fear, the blood of Jesus is against you. And I stood on the blood and I claimed the blood and I proclaimed the power of God over my life. It took about three to four minutes. You have to fight. You have to resist. 
It's not that you try it once or twice, it didn't work, and you just give in to the enemy. You have to resist. Amen. Three to four minutes as I declared it, suddenly the power of God came upon me and joy broke out and the oppression at that moment was destroyed. Number two, where does our authority come from? It comes from your uniform. Did you know that you have a uniform in the spirit? It is called the robes of righteousness. Everyone say righteousness. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10. Write it down because this will be the key to your future. Tomorrow morning when you call me at 6 a.m. for a panicking prayer, I'm not going to pick up your phone. I'm going to tell you, where you taking notes? Amen. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God. For He has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me. He has wrapped you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He has wrapped you just like you wrap yourself with a shawl when it is winter time. He has wrapped you. With a robe of righteousness. And in the spirit realm, I tell you, you are really bling bling. You are really shining. You are light. Darkness cannot overcome you. Can you say hallelujah? Amen. You see, when you wear a uniform, it gives you boldness. Have you ever been a part of NCC and you wore a uniform? See, when I was working uh, in the Bible school, I used to get a uniform to be an usher. When we used to get our uniform, we used to feel really bold to tell people, hey, this way, that way, sit down. See, our authority came from our uniform. See, you are clothed in the robes of righteousness. Don't look at yourself in the natural. If you look at yourself in the natural, you can get depressed looking at yourself in the mirror. Because you have 20 new pimples that came up today. All right, you have five-year-old dress. And you say, I have nothing to wear. Don't look at yourself in the natural. Look at yourself in the spirit. Can you say, Amen? Hallelujah. I remember doing deliverance some years back. And as I was praying over this lady, the thought came to me by the enemy. It says, you committed that sin. You are not good enough to deliver this girl. A thought came. And I knew that it was from Satan. But when the thought came, it was a guilt-conscious thought, sin-conscious thought. And it wasn't like a major sin. It was like, I just fought with someone. See, it stole confidence and faith away from me. But at that moment, from within, a voice of the Holy Spirit came, you are the righteousness of God. You are forgiven of your sins. And I began to picture myself covered in a robe of righteousness. And then authority came to deliver that woman out and she was delivered. Hallelujah. See, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Isaiah 54 verse 17. The Bible says, no weapon formed against the believer shall prosper. You know why? Because you are the righteousness of God. That verse says, because your righteousness comes from Him. Don't take confidence in your own good works, in your own righteousness. Take confidence in the righteousness of God. Don't be confident saying, I have prayed enough, now I have authority. No, even if you have not prayed, because sometimes the enemy will only attack you when you have not prayed. For five or six weeks, you have not come to church, you have not prayed, you feel weak. Then the enemy comes and it makes you feel like you have no authority to cast him out. Even at that moment, for whatever reason, you have not been in the presence of God. Yet you can stand on his righteousness, you can stand on the blood of Jesus and you can resist. Hallelujah. Fourth point is this. I'm sorry, the third point. The badge of authority. If you have a uniform, you have a badge. And you have a badge of authority. And that badge of authority is specific verses. Like Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. I have been delivered from the power of darkness. And I've been translated into the kingdom of the son of his love. Matthew 28 verse 19. Go ye therefore into all the world. Because all authority has been given to Jesus Christ. See. The power in the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. The name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Those specific verses that you have in your heart, they become the badge of your authority. So when you pray, use those scriptures. Number four. Look at Mark chapter 16 verse 17. 
Mark chapter 16, verse 17. I want you to turn in your Bibles to look at this. And these signs will follow those who believe. It doesn't say those who are pastors, those who are prophets, those who are mighty men and women of God. No, these signs will follow those who? Those who? Any believers in church today? Yes, these signs will follow you if you will believe. Not only believe in Jesus, you believe this word. You believe that there is power in the name of Jesus. In my name, they will cast out demons. In my name. The name of Jesus is the rod of your dominion. The name of Jesus is the scepter of your authority. The name of Jesus is the danda God has given you to beat the evil spirits. Don't allow them to beat you. The rod of dominion is the name of Jesus. Paul spoke to that spirit of divination in that servant girl. I command you in the name of Jesus, come out of her. So if you can picture in the spirit realm, when Paul said, in the name of Jesus, it was almost like a patak. That's what happens. See, don't be so earthly conscious that you cannot imagine spiritual reality. The name of Jesus is like a baseball bat. That when you say, in the name of Jesus, patak. See, use it. Use it. See, we are not using it. And that's why we are getting beaten and oppressed by the powers of darkness. If fear is oppressing you, if depression is oppressing you, suicidal thoughts are oppressing you, don't get into self-pity and blame other people. You rise up and take authority over your own life. God has given you authority over your thoughts. God has given you authority over your body. God has given you authority over your mind. You can choose what to think. Don't say, I can't help it, Pastor. These thoughts, they just come and overcome me. I have no control. You have control. You have control. Because in the midst of you saying, I can't help it, I can't help it. If I come and give you 5,000 rupees, you'll say, Ah, thank you, Pastor. At that moment, your thoughts change. You have the authority to control your thoughts. Don't allow the enemy to be a parking spot in your brain. Amen. Use the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the rod of dominion. I command you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And beat the living daylights out of that sickness. Now we don't use the name of Jesus to beat one another. <laughs> don't exercise it in a wrong way again. We use the name of Jesus to beat the devil, demons, evil spirits. Do you know that they are real beings in the spirit? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. If it's a spirit, it means this. Well, you can use the name of Jesus and smack him on the face. It's the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You can take the name of Jesus like a stick and smack him on the face. You can smack fear on the face and smack him so hard he doesn't come back. But sometimes you have to do it again and again because they are also quite persistent. Hallelujah. The, thick, the, the fifth point is this. Where does our authority come from? The command of prayer. Look at Luke chapter 4, verse 39. Luke chapter 4, verse 39. So Jesus stood over Peter's mother-in-law and rebuked. We all wish that he rebuked the mother-in-law, but not the mother-in-law. He rebuked the fever. 
love your mother-in-laws. Amen. Oh, he rebuked the? Jesus rebuked who? The fever. He addressed the situation. He addressed the problem. He addressed the sickness. He spoke to the sickness. Rebuked. The word rebuke means to speak sharply. It means to censure. It means to say no. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 1, we saw verse 25. Jesus rebuked the evil spirit and said, Be quiet. How do I use my authority? You use authority through your mouth. Your mouth. The command of faith in prayer. See, Bible says, Say, the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. You need to speak. There is no such thing as silent faith. Faith is always expressed in what you say. You must speak. If you have difficulty to speak and declare your rights, your authorities, and command the evil spirits, maybe you need to get born again. This, this is the way the kingdom operates. He rebuked the evil spirit. He rebuked the sickness. Paul rebuked the evil spirit and said, command you to come out in Jesus' name. There is no place for politeness here. There's no place to say, Lord Jesus, please rebuke that evil spirit. No. You have to rebuke using the name of Jesus as the rod. Hallelujah. So don't try to be polite with evil spirits. When I was young and I did not know much of this truth, I was thinking, you know, I think I'll tell the devil, you don't disturb me, I will not disturb you. I didn't want to be attacked spiritually. So I was thinking, if I don't disturb him, he will not disturb me. But the truth is, if you are born again, you have already disturbed him. If you are born again, you are already an enemy. Hallelujah. He sees you as a threat, whether you like it or not. You might as well get to know you, use your weapons, stand on your authority, and beat him more and more. Amen. Hallelujah. Should Christians fear demons? No. Now, it doesn't mean we go around looking for demons. But we have no fear. Our focus is doing the will of God. And we have authority that whatever can come against you in your doing the word of God, you have authority over it. Amen. And when they show up, we have the authority to take care of the situation. Anything that limits you. See, the devil has put things in your life that limits you. So that you will not function in your God-given dominion and authority on the earth. For you to function as a son of God. For you to function as an ambassador of Christ. For you to function as the bride of Christ. Manifesting the purpose and the will of God on the earth. You need to use your authority. You cannot function as a Christian without exercising your authority. God, Satan tries to limit you through fear, by bringing sickness, by bringing poverty, by bringing opposition from people, by stirring up opposition through evil spirits, sometimes division, sometimes gossip, sometimes hatred. Now, God has given us authority to take care of all those situations, not the people, but the spirits that are provoking them. The evil spirits that are assigned to rake up Opposition to the gospel. We can take authority over the spirits. Hallelujah. Now you have to believe the word of God. When we try to reason too much, it takes us out again of the exercise of authority. You see, our reasoning must lead us to one conclusion. The word of God is true. And we can exercise the word of God as it is. Our reasoning should not lead us away from the word, but to the word of God. Amen. As the word says, demons are supposed to flee from us. Not Christians fleeing from demons. I was told by a pastor that in some parts of India, the pastors are going to witchcraft gurus. 
to get power to grow the churches. And the witchcraft guru told this power, these pastors have no power. But there are genuine people, Christians, men of God, who have the power and the authority of God. And we cannot even touch them. True confession. Two weeks back I heard this. The power of the spirit realm is real. It is real. We need to understand that. And we need to stand on the power that we have. It is greater. Greater is he who lives in you than he that lives in the world. You have greater authority. You have greater power. Greater dominion than any evil spirit. It is only when you have knowledge that you will rise up to exercise your authority. Have you ever seen light afraid of darkness? Have you ever seen light flee when darkness comes? No. Darkness is afraid of light. Whenever light is switched on, darkness flees. Darkness has no authority over light. Even the weakest light in the darkest of room, the light will win. You light up a candle in the darkest of nights, the candle will win. You are light in the Lord. The light doesn't come from somewhere else. You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are light. God has created you. He has given you His nature. You have the nature of God in you. You have the nature of the Lion of Judah in you. You have the nature of the commander of the king's armies in you. The moment you begin to open your mouth, even if it may be for the first time, in a timid way, demons will flee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It is released through a command of faith. That's why we need to speak boldly when we are taking our authority. Use words like, I command you in Jesus' name, flee from this place. I rebuke you, spirit of fear, in the name of Jesus. Every evil spirit afflicting in the name of Jesus, I bind you and I command you to leave this place. Every satanic agent released against me to stop me in doing the will of God. I bind you in the name of Jesus and I destroy your works. Speak with boldness. And when you pray the command of faith, it is not a prayer. It is a command. It is not a prayer. It is a command. You are exercising your authority as a king on the earth. The Bible says we are kings and priests on the earth. God has given you back the authority through Jesus Christ as it was given to Adam to rule and to dominate over the earth. That means all the power of the enemy is under our feet. We have been given authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Trample underfoot. Put it under your feet. How? It's not your literal foot. It's from your mouth. Your mouth. Hallelujah. Look at this picture of a policeman up there on the screen. And there you will see the source of our authority. The grounds of authority is the blood of Jesus. The rod of authority is the name of Jesus. The badge of authority are the scriptures. The voice of authority is the command that we give. The garments of authority is the robes of righteousness. But there's also an aura of authority. Not everyone has that. Those who spend time in the presence of God can walk in greater dominion and greater authority. Those who are filled with the Holy Spirit can walk in greater dominion and greater authority. This is where our authority comes from. If you strip that policeman of the uniform, of the stick, of the badge, do you think you will be afraid of him on the street when he tells you, don't park here? Huh? You will make fun of him. But if he goes home, he puts on his uniform, he puts on the, sta- the, the stick, he puts on the badge, and he comes and commands you, will you be afraid of him? Yes. Will you submit to him? Yes. 
So the authority doesn't come from the policeman. The authority comes from the symbols of the government's authority given to him. So even you, the authority doesn't come from you in yourself. The authority comes from God. The authority comes from what Christ has done for you. The blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, righteousness, glory to God. Amen. The only thing is this. Your faith is required. You have to exercise your authority. Having all of that, you can be quiet and timid. And guess what? We will take advantage of the teacher who is always quiet. Right? The teacher never says anything. The teacher never rebukes us. So the classroom is wild. People are jumping out of the classroom. People are bringing food in the classroom. Some people are smoking in the back. But the teacher is okay. It's okay. The teacher is not exercising his authority. And that is why we are seeing the disorder and the chaos. When you and I do not exercise our authority, we allow the enemy to come and create havoc in our lives. But when we know that we have this, because you already have this, you already have it. Even if you don't know you have the robes of righteousness and you still speak the name of Jesus, authority will flow. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know what you came with this morning. I know you came with yourself and you came with your friends. But maybe some of you brought some friends that you don't know. You have never seen them. But they are in your life. I'm talking about dark friends. And they have to bow to the name of Jesus. Whether it's fear, whether it's oppression.